chapter 8 the word, H. The Living Truth Text, Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 to 58 the same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up, some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and fought with they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth, and when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up, and choked them, but other fell into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came, and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance, but whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see and see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive, for this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it, yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution are reset because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this word, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth, some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tears? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Would thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took, and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took, and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away, and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one, the enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, 
and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tears are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man, seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net, that was cast into the sea, and gathered of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore, and sat down, and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth, and sever the wicked from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They say unto him, Yea, Lord. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. And it came to pass, that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished, and said, Whence had this man this wisdom, and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James, and Hoses, and Simon, and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 to 58. Golden text, Luke chapter 1 verse 37, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 to 14, Matthew chapter 13 verse 16, The truth must be told, read John chapter 7 verses 4 to 8, For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, shew thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast, I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. The cause of the problems facing the churches of the world, and indeed the people of the world in general, is not so far-fetched. Different churches of the world claim to be the best. I challenge any of them to tell me one good thing they have done as a body that qualifies them to be the best church. Which of the words of God have they practiced in earnest? People claim that the Roman Catholic Church was the first church in the world and that it has many great and wealthy men as its members. Is that all it takes for a church to be rated as the best? What good thing in the Bible have they practiced? Think of a common thing like baptism by immersion as undertaken by our Lord Jesus Christ. Have you seen any member of the Roman Catholic Church, including the Pope, who has ever received baptism by immersion? If they cannot do a simple thing like that why do they profess to be followers of Christ? Have they not contradicted the teachings of Christ? Is this what makes them the best church? Whosoever does not receive baptism by immersion is not baptized, and without baptism there is no hope for salvation. As true as this statement is, where lies the hope for salvation for the Catholics? Should the world come to an end today, which of them would be saved? Baptism of repentance, dear brethren, you cannot stop me from speaking the truth. The same applies to the Muslims. Of all the wars they are fighting, causing commotion all over the place, none of them is sensible enough to think of baptism. Except they receive baptism as the first step to Christianity, they will not be saved. If this is the situation in the world, what is the reason for their arrogance? It does not cost anyone something to receive baptism. All you need do is to confess your sins, repent of all your sins, and accept baptism by immersion. 
and you will receive salvation through being endowed with the Holy Spirit. Without baptism you cannot be endowed with the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who will guide you to the knowledge of the truth wherein lies your salvation. Who among the juju doctors, soothsayers, wizards, occultists, and members of the different secret societies the world over, has received baptism by immersion? None in all the war-torn countries of the world is baptized. The communist countries, and indeed, the western world do indeed have the need for baptism by immersion. What qualifies one to be Christian or a child of God is baptism. Water is available everywhere, yet you do not want to get baptized. Nobody could rightly claim ignorance of God's charge that confession of sins, repentance and accepting baptism make for the forgiveness of sins. Without this, your sins cannot be forgiven. To know that these are the conditions to be fulfilled before your sins are forgiven, and you refuse to comply with such instructions, is in itself a sin, as the scripture says, therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. James chapter 4 verse 17 If I do not disclose this truth to the world what else did I come to do in the world? How can I change man without disclosing the truth to him? I have no alternative but to tell the world the truth. And those who have ears will hear and know the truth. The world had since been in darkness, and the truth had eluded the world but today, having come to tell you the truth, you are living witnesses that the world is shaking greatly as a result of the truth which is glaring just like death. Once it is your turn to leave this world, there is nowhere you can run to, and you cannot hide from death. Read Matthew chapter 19 verses 3 to 9 The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement, and to put her away? He said unto them, Moses because of the hardness of your hearts suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery, and whoso married her which is put away doth commit adultery. Have only one wife, the excerpt above is the word of God. And you cannot preach it in any church of the world without facing persecution at the hands of the members. It is only here in this kingdom that this truth is accepted as it is. The world takes delight in marrying and remarrying. People now change wives like they change their clothes. They claim that God created women for men and that there are many women to choose from. This type of gospel cannot be preached in the churches of the world. If one dares it, the members will connive and suspend him or dismember the preacher with immediate effect. This is the immutable truth. This sermon right from time immemorial has never gained the acceptance of many, even the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ did not give total support to it. Hence they said to him, If the case of the man be so with the wife, it is not good to marry. Matthew chapter 19 verse 10 They reacted in this way because this was their stock in trade, i.e. To have chains of women. Many people in this kingdom are very sad about this sermon because they know that they are guilty of it. The fact is that they have more than one wife, and at the same time, they maintain chains of concubines outside the matrimonial homes, so they see this sermon as not palatable to be swallowed. Let it be known to you that God is no respecter of persons, and so are his words. The truth must be told at all times, no matter how it is received by the listeners. I do not want any man to love, thank and appreciate whatever I say and do. I do not do anything to win the favor of any man. Notwithstanding, your person, even though you are the head of state or president, when the truth is to be told, I do it without fear or favor. There is no truth in the world, hence the hardship experienced all over the globe. Formation of organizations and committees is no solution to the problem facing the entire world system. There is a general lack of truth in the world. It is only the living truth that will replenish the world. And it will also bring an end to the world's problems. The truth cannot be mortgaged for any other thing. 
This accounts for the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ said that it is not every man that can receive the word of God. But those who receive it are saved. Matthew chapter 19 verse 11, shun all manners of sins, some people think that because they are virgins, they can enter the kingdom of God if they continue to tell lies, or because they have stopped drinking, that they can inherit the kingdom of God when they are still fornicating. Except you refrain from all manners of sins, you have no place in this kingdom. Recall the reactions of the disciples when our Lord Jesus Christ said that it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. They were amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? When Christ heard this he turned and said to them, With men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Matthew chapter 19 version 24 to 26 Our Lord Jesus Christ purposely deliberated on this truth. His disciples did not think that this truth could be told by him. They thought that for following Christ, they could be glorified with abundance of wealth. But surprisingly, instead of Christ, by their own thoughts, to pronounce that all those who followed him would from then become the richest in the world, he rather told them the risk of a rich man likely to miss the kingdom of God. They were astonished at this heart-breaking revelation. They said to themselves, if indeed a rich man could not enter the kingdom of God, who then would? They asked this because their hope was that they would be made rich by the person they followed. This is exactly the situation with you today. None of you can rightly claim that you came here for the word of God. You are all here requesting for wealth. All your prayers and letters to the Father center around material wealth. This is the reason why you become overexcited when the Father makes pronouncements that He has given you wealth. And this is when you vociferate, and you will be beaming with joy. Today you are worried just as the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ were in the days of old. You detest the truth, but I must tell it to you because this is what I stand for. There is a reward for an honest worker, wealth cannot usher you into the kingdom of God. This kingdom has no need for material things because those material things will fade away in a short while and the word of God lives forever. You merely claim that you do not have anything to do with money. In your hearts of hearts, material things are your main concern. If you deny this assertion, why do you change your mind to go back to the world when you have problems? However, there is a handsome reward for all those who have actually forsaken everything and followed God for the sake of the gospel. Peter demanded this from Christ, and he was told that all those who forsake houses, brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, among other material things of this world for the sake of God, shall receive a hundredfold. And in addition, they will have everlasting life. Matthew chapter 19 verses 27 to 29. This promise is still in force till today, and for generations to come. But man's promise is short-lived. Anything about this carnal world is temporary. It has a defined time. It cannot exceed that period, else trouble, rancor, and violence will set in. But the promise of God endures for eternity. It is only impatience which prompts most people to ask questions. This will give room for them to speculate that God loves another person more than them. As such, you give the glory of God to juju or man. It is greed and blind jealousy that moves you into murmuring and blaspheming against God. And this is the time you will recount how much of work you have done for God without a reward, and that you are not rewarded by God properly. You cannot cause God to go contrary to His will and promise for man. God knows exactly what is good for you. He knows that if He should provide you with your heart's desire at the time you want it, you will backslide, and you will forget about God. You should know that everlasting life is greater than the material things you crave for. The world will be ruled by the children of God when all things would have been made anew. No sinner will partake in the rulership. If you want to rule with Christ, you have to forsake all the things of this world and follow him sheepishly. If your reward will be a hundredfold of what you have forsaken, what will be your gain if you have not forsaken anything? You rather come in here with problems, sickness and poverty. What then is holding you back from forsaking what you seemingly have for the sake of this kingdom? You could in this situation be likened to someone rejecting a whole tuba of yam for only a slice. There is no disappointment whatsoever for all those who have done the will of God. Read Matthew chapter 25 verses 32 to 40.
and before him shall be gathered all nations, and ye shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and ye shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, for I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat, I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink, I was a stranger, and ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me, I was sick, and ye visited me, I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee unhungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. There is nothing in the world. If your eyes were to open, you would have beheld this kingdom and the glory of it. John, our Lord Jesus Christ, and even Paul, came to this realization in their time, and that was the reason they left no stone unturned in serving God. They deprived themselves of material things. They devoted their whole lives and times to serving God, knowing fully well that their reward is immeasurable. If you should come to this awareness, you would not deceive yourself as you do now. Do you think that God is blind, and that I do not see all the things you do? You will pretend to be a very good person when you are in my presence but you turn out to be something else when you are outside this vicinity. Who is fooling whom in this regard? God is omnipresent. He is an all-seeing God. You cannot trick God. Except you forsake those things you keep and follow him sheepishly, you cannot qualify for his reward. The truth is that you do not lose anything in serving God. You will rather gain. After all if you do the will of God, you will automatically become the Son of God, and no more a servant. As a Son of God, you have the irrevocable right to dwell in the house of God forever. Read John chapter 8 verse 35. And the servant abodeth not in the house forever, but the Son abodeth ever. Dwelling in the house of God forever means you will suffer no death. That is, you will have everlasting life, whereas the material things of this world will in due time pass away. See 1 John chapter 2 verse 17, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That is not all. See also Matthew chapter 13 verse 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Know that it is only those who have forsaken all the material things of this world for the sake of God who will have the glory in the kingdom of their father. Come rain or shine, this promise cannot be altered. The promise of God is the most reliable thing that ever existed, and so, even if heaven and earth come together, the promise of God must come to fulfillment. See also Revelation chapter 2 verses 26 to 28, And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father and I will give him the morning star. The present condition of the world is informed by dishonesty, falsehood, and had there been any truthful person, the world would not have been like this. If you, brotherhood members, had practiced the truth as you have been taught in this kingdom, your sterling qualities would have endeared you to the world for leadership. The people of the world would be coming to me to request for leaders amongst you, the members of brotherhood. All appointments would have been made from among you. Like other nations of the world, Nigeria would be coming to me to appoint for them a president, ministers, governors, local government chairman, etc. Every woman in need of a good husband and every man in need of a wife would be coming to the Father requesting for one amongst you. It is under such a condition that every appointment, both in the public and in private sectors, would have been made solely amongst members of brotherhood because of your sterling qualities and because you resemble the Father who is the sole owner of everything. Here in the kingdom, there is money, employment opportunities, and indeed all the good things of life. The only thing that is lacking is honesty. There are no honest people to harness these resources for the benefit of all. This task cannot be accomplished by a sinner. No sinner will ever have access to this kingdom. All manners of sins, and sinners themselves, will perish.
whoever claims to be brotherhood yet commits fornication, adultery, idolatry, murder, covetousness, duping people, suing someone to court or engaging in any form of evil, shall not gain entrance into this kingdom. Whoever continues to sin yet claims to be a brotherhood member, is making false claims, and he is a liar. If you live in someone's house and you refuse to pay rent when the rent is due, you are not a brotherhood member but an anti-brotherhood. All brotherhood members should live an exemplary life, worthy of emulation and acceptable in the sight of God. You have to live a sin-free life. The people of the world and their governments are in dire need of honest men, even a civilian president in Nigeria. Much money has been spent by several aspirants in buying both the electorate and electoral officers. Hence they turn to brotherhood members to take charge of their treasuries. They do this in the belief that the brotherhood members have no need for luxuries. Like those appointed into key positions in the government, not much is required from the government in terms of hotel bills, entertainment bills, hospital bills, etc. This is because, if a brotherhood member travels to a place he would prefer to sleep in the battle, he neither drinks nor eats meat. When he is sick, he does not go to hospital nor any chemist but he is treated spiritually. But the situation is different with someone who is not a brotherhood member. He would receive allowances for all these things and yet incur extra bills. The problem with you is that you have refused to practice the truth. You are all rendering eye services and pretending to be good in the presence of the Holy Father but the moment you are off, you become wolves. You think the Father does not see you. The people of the world are blaming you because their hope is in you. This is because you have refused to live up to their expectations, they are greatly disappointed. This, therefore, accounts for the negative comments they make against you. After all, Proverbs chapter 13 verse 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, and a broken heart forces out evil utterances. I want you to note that the blame you receive from people as a result of your failure to practice God's injunctions signifies the annoyance of God. If you were to practice the truth as taught to you in this kingdom, you would not lack anything. Many of those who had regarded themselves as great men have now been brought low because of their dishonesty. If you occupy an exalted position in the government, and you use that position to exhibit dishonesty, you will be criticized and removed from office. Someone else would be appointed to take your place immediately you are removed. This is the reason why George Bush suffered defeat at the just concluded presidential election in the United States of America. This is also the cause of delay in the election of a civilian president in Nigeria. Much money has been spent by several aspirants in buying both the electorate and electoral officers. The politicians themselves should by now realize that the present Nigeria is different from that of the past. It may not be easy for them to bulldoze their way to the government house. The loss incurred by those aspirants now could best be imagined than described. Yet it is a tip of the iceberg. Wait and see what will happen in the future. Money is no more the source of power because it cannot buy power. The only qualification as approved by God is perfection. This invariably means that this is the time for the children of God to rule. It is the best of time. All the important positions in the world government will be filled with the children of brotherhood in the nearest future. Right now, brotherhood has taken control of everything. This is the time for love and truth to rule. Who in world has the authority to judge a child of brotherhood? Those at the helm of affairs in governments are a corrupt lot. The inspector general of police is a thief, the president, the attorney general and indeed, all the government functionaries are dupes. Can a criminal judge the righteous? The whole world is now afraid of members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Whenever they wish to perform their havoc, they think twice about the presence of members of Brotherhood. The people of the world are afraid of you because they are not doing the right thing. Read Matthew chapter 13 verses 39 to 42. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tears are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. This shows you that the word of God is truth and remains so for eternity. 
What do you think is the cause of all the sickness in the world today? Dreadful sicknesses as AIDS, strokes, quashiaka, among others, are caused by man's disobedience. Whosoever disobeys God must suffer for his disobedience. The Holocaust that prevails in the world is a fulfillment of the word of God as recorded in the scriptures. Read Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 to 20. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion, when he strike the man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and, behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth, and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 to 20. The spiritual war, there is nothing in the world that takes God unawares. Anything that happens in the world is in accordance with what was predestined. The wars you hear about in different parts of the world are not accidental but manifestations of the spoken word of God. Government is no longer important and is unnecessary. The United Nations is no longer effective. That is why they are unable to find a lasting solution to the causes of wars in the world. The whites and the blacks have tried all their best to arrest the wars which are going on in the world today, but all efforts prove abortive owing to the fact that the said wars are not of man, but of God. In the same way the natural disasters you experience and hear about are undertaken by the angels. That is the reason why it is not possible for man to arrest such situations. The angels have started their work in a big way. Christ assigned all angels to take charge of everything that happens in the world. That is the reason why you are alerted to the fact that it is the angels alone who are responsible for whatever happens on earth. The destruction of the world and all the ungodly things therein would not be done by fire nor man. Rather, it will be affected by the angels. The communist countries and the other parts of the world are all adversely affected by the happenings in the world. The world at large is subject to destruction, but the children of brotherhood of the cross and star have salvation. This deduction is right because it is the people of the world only who come to brotherhood for help and salvation. Whereas brotherhood of the cross and star members do not seek for any help from them, it is brotherhood of the cross and star members alone who are free. 
A spiritual song has it that they have been identified as such, they are blameless. Those who lack the identification mark of God on their foreheads would be destroyed. One needs to know that it is the angels who identify the worthy people. But the question is, do you know whether you have this identification mark to be identified with? Read Revelations chapter 7 verses 1 to 17. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hath not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Azar were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Nephtalim were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed twelve th thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed twelve thousand. After this I beheld, and, lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are the which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Revelations chapter 7 verses 1 to 17. So beloved, use the portion above to affirm that it is the angels who are doing every work now. The hall is always filled with angels. It is for this reason that it becomes imperative that we should humble ourselves and keep silence whenever we are before him. If it should happen that while we are in the hall worshipping, then fire descends from heaven above on you, you should not attribute it to anyone else, but to the angels. Many markets have been reportedly burned down without the government, soothsayers, necromancers or churches knowing the sources of the fire. But now you have been made to know that it is the angels who are the brain behind every happening in the world, ranging from epidemics, war, famine, drought, earthquake, and many other natural disasters. There are diverse duties here on earth to be accomplished by the angels, so also are many angels here on earth. Some angels are responsible for justifying while others condemn. Furthermore, there are some angels whose sole duty is to bring converts into the kingdom. So all works are done by the angels. Only human beings sleep, but the angels never fall asleep nor do they slumber. Their main concern is to carry out their assignment effectively. At the fullness of time, the whole world will be shaken to its foundation because all those who refuse to listen to the word of God will be condemned while those who embrace and exalt God will be saved. The said task would not be accomplished by anyone else apart from the angels. Read Revelation chapter 11 verses 1 to 19. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, 
for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees, and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindred and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and an half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and an half the Spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and, behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces, and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art, and wast, and art to come because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings, and voices, and thunderings, and an earthquake and great hell. The above portion is what Asesu Inyan Ibom and Chokudi have been reading to people anytime they wish to deceive people. Whenever the said portion is read to you, you get shaken. The content of that portion in the scripture is exactly what will happen here in the world. He who takes delight in committing evil should continue. The whole world will surely see the adverse effect of indulging in sins. Apart from brotherhood of the cross and star, there is no other place that one could run to for salvation. This is the only source of salvation to mankind. The people of the world know this kingdom more than you, members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. They always come here in the Spirit. This depicts the Father as the Father of all nations. He is known in every nook and cranny of the world. Therefore, one needs not to go about telling people to know the Father. Read Matthew chapter 25 verses 45 and 46. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And this shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Avoid evil acts, swindlers, dupes, liars, robbers, thieves and the like should take note of the above text. They should realize that whatever happens to them is not caused by human beings, witchcraft or any other evil force, but the activities of the angels. The accidents you see happening daily on our roads are caused by nothing but the angels. That is why you seldom see the children of God, Brotherhood of the Cross and Star members, involved in such a situation. At various checkpoints, only the people of the world are confronted but the children of God are free. Whenever members of Brotherhood get to such checkpoints where the police or ordinary people are on duty, they would make way for the children of God to pass. This is so because the angels are in control of everything, and not the human beings' poesy. Even while on certain spots on the road that are very rough, it is the angels that maneuver the vehicles of Brotherhood members out of such places. 
they control the steering and the engine of the vehicles. Having known that this is the end of time why then do you still indulge in vices? The angels are so numerous here in the kingdom. They are so numerous that sometimes we human beings sit or step on them unconsciously. Once you pronounce, let thanks and glory be ascribed to the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you find a ladder descending from heaven to this earth with numerous angels. Brotherhood of the cross and star is never something one should measure or compare his power with. That is why I always inform you that it is only a fool who tempts brotherhood of the cross and star. The angels are responsible for guiding and guarding you to and from your house each time you go out. It is the angels who also preach here in the kingdom. You do not really know where you are, for if you were to know, you would have abstained from the vices which you continue to commit daily. The angels are on earth to carry out any work assigned to them by the Father, and their work is not evil. They are always ready to protect and guide you. Read Revelation chapter 14 verses 6 to 20. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven, and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name? Here is the patience of the saints, here are they that keep the commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. And I looked, and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Trust in thy sickle, and reap for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud trust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was ripped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Trust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Do not think that those who have passed away are the worst of sinners, some are better than you are. So, it is out of ignorance for one to say that he or she is not like those who have passed away. What is carried out by specific angels assigned to handle the process? From the portion of the scripture cited above, have you read of any human being mentioned there apart from the angels? This is to show you that it is the angels alone who are assigned to do all things on earth. Now how do you feel about the biblical excerpt above? Have you gone to impart this very teaching to the people of the world? The entire world is afraid and astonished about what is going on in the world, even though we have not yet reached the climax of what is yet to come. The members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star are not perturbed at all because whatever is their heart's desire, the angels are there to provide them. Have you not heard about the story concerning a woman in Los Angeles, California, who is an angel? The angel is there in her place of abode seeing the Father lavishly. A great number of those who used to speak evil against Brotherhood of the Cross and Star are being chained. People do not speak carelessly about Brotherhood of the Cross and Star again. The cases of oppressing and duping Brotherhood of the Cross and Star are minimal now because the protagonists of such acts are being chained. Also, 
members of brotherhood are not subjected to maltreatment, oppression and deprivation in government offices. The reason for this is that those who used to indulge in such acts have been reprimanded. Angels are messengers of God. Since there is nothing we can accomplish on our own, we should not boast of anything done by God through us. Stop professing to have done that much for brotherhood of the cross and star, because without God and the angels, nothing can be done on earth. There shall come a time when people will be harvesting exactly what they sowed. The angels are always very serious in their undertaking, for none of them is as redundant as man is. Read Matthew chapter 13 verses 47 to 50. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. The angels are always moving about here on earth and they are the ones to execute the Father's pronouncements. Anyone who does not take his time will earn the wrath of God through the angels. Why those who take their time are bound to be guided, protected and saved? The angels have no case to answer, and there is no judgment for them. This is because they do not fail in their duties. Because of the wrath of God on mankind, especially the ungodly ones, through the angels, that is the reason why mankind is being infected with incurable diseases which defy medical science. The children of God should walk majestically, for having been assured of salvation in return for their attitude towards God's services. The angels are those who heal the sick. The United Nations is unable to provide solutions to wars which are going on in the world. This is very easy for the angels to accomplish in a matter of seconds. Read Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 33. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. And read Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 7. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the words, who being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath. By inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he said, Who mocketh his angel spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. I am sitting at a corner watching how you face God's wrath for deliberate refusal to do his injunctions and honor him. Let my peace and blessings rest and abide with the entire world now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Father.